I personally believe that Amazon is the best company in the world. I think it is the best managed, it is the best run, and it is going to continue to be one of the most profitable companies in the world. But it just had its earnings um, report and it blew things out of the water and didn't really go anywhere. Why not? I believe Amazon has lost its momentum. And I want to talk to you about, in this video, how I think it will regain its momentum and prove me right when I said on November the 30th of last year that it would become a $5,000 stock. And then on February the 2nd of this year, I said it would go up between 44 and uh, 94%, which would bring it to uh, $4,752 or $6,400. So how is that going to happen? I think I know how it can happen. And I wanted to address this to their new CEO and make some suggestions of how my predictions of Amazon being a 5,000 plus stock can come to fruition. So stay with me. Um, some of this may be new to you. Some of it may be old to you. But it's how I'm thinking about Amazon. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Grinkmeyer. First of all, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm uh, the host of the Best of Us Investors YouTube channel. Um, we are a community right now of uh, approaching 150,000 subscribers, uh, 20,000 um, members at our Discord, where we talk about specifically three things. One, making better investment decisions. Number two, um, keeping more of what you make by understanding your tax code. And number three, setting a goal. And that goal is to accumulate $24 million that you don't need in your lifetime so that you can make a difference in your family's life. That's what we're all about. If that sounds like something you want to be about, Go to Best of Us Investors, give me your name and your email address, and I'll send you a link invitation to our Discord. Okay, let's talk about Amazon. Some changes. A uh, gentleman by the name of uh, Jassy has become the new CEO as Jeff steps aside. That's uh, Andy Jassy, J-A-S-S-Y. He was the head of Amazon Web Services, which I think is probably a good choice. I don't know a lot about Andy, but um, I think he's coming from the right place. I think this is where the growth opportunities in Amazon exist, and I'll share with you why I think that. Uh, first of all, as a member of cloud services, that's where the profits are being made at Amazon. Uh, it's not at the the um, where you go and buy your shoes and your clothes and your printers and your ink, it's actually in web services. And they are growing astronomically there. Um, they have their in growth, their online sales segment um, grew by 39%. And that's up substantially from past years. But then again, the um, the price of the stock just basically didn't move. It was, okay, so they've done well again. Um, Amazon has improved its margins because it's become more efficient and it's increased its margins from 5.18% to uh, 6.4 in 2020, which is a substantial increase. That's... Uh, that's almost 20% increase in, in, uh, in margins. Substantial. So how do we get Amazon from roughly, currently it's at $3,300. How do we get it to over $4,000? How do we get it to $5,000? What does Andy Jaffe have to do, is that right, Jesse, to make it happen? Basically, he's got to change the perceptive perception 
of Amazon amongst you and I, the retail investors. And when I say retail investors, I think immediately of the Robin Hood crowd. If I'm in Robin Hood and Amazon is $3,300 a share, I'm not real anxious to, to buy a tenth of a share. It doesn't get me real excited. I probably also don't understand how Amazon makes most of its money in web services. So I want to show you uh, a picture here of Amazon's ownership of the web services market. What is the web services market? Well, we used to have, when we worked on our computers, a hard drive that kept all of our information and all of our data on our hard drive. Then we got a mobile phone and we were introduced to apps. And these apps gave us ways to work effectively um, in different aspects of the internet. Those apps then became collectors of data. And that data had to go from that phone or that desktop or that laptop to somewhere. And that's where we were introduced to the cloud. I can remember, what, what is a cloud? And looking up into the sky and thinking, well, I guess it's this data that my computer is generating and it goes and it sits in a, in a cloud up in the sky. And that's really a pretty good representation of what it is. The fact is, it's actually in huge buildings that are acres large with servers where that data comes and is housed. Now, that data is basically controlled by a group of corporations. And here you can see who they are and, and their share of the market. And up, up at the top, you see Amazon Web Services. They got into this kind of through the back door. Um, they had a very successful uh, e-commerce site that just blew the doors off from November the 1st through February the 1st every year. And they had to have these massive servers in order to handle all those orders coming in and going out. Well, then after February the 1st, the whole thing kind of pulled back and didn't have a lot of work. So Amazon said, we need to keep those servers working. So we're going to offer the use of those servers to those people who have created the apps on all these phones at a ridiculously low price. So they, they undercut everybody else who was in the business and basically have grown to where they are now. That's their baby. That's where the money comes. That's where they don't get a lot of flack from the, the judicial department. They don't get called up to, uh, to come. And that's where their margins are strong and they're continuing to grow. And why will they continue to grow? Well, first, first of all, because of the accelerated technology that is creating data. We have right now the internet of you and I. Through 5G, we're going to create the internet of everything. Our car is connected to the internet. Soon our house will be connected to the internet and then more data will go into the cloud. So that is going to grow. Uh, the rapid adoption of the smartphone, not in the United States and Europe and China, but in the third world, they are becoming having access to the phones and access to the internet. And that means all the more data that is going to flow into the cloud and feed Amazon Web Services, the leader in the field. And then as you add to the existing sources of creating data, artificial intelligence and machine learning, actually putting that capability in chips that then could generate more data, we feed Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, IBM, uh, Apple, but the big winner is going to be Amazon Web Services. And thus we have a tremendous growth potential. So that tells me Amazon's going to keep growing, but how do we get them to gain the momentum, to gain the interest 
of the young retail investor because that's who's got, that's who their customer is for their stock in the future. Well, I think the first thing you need to recognize is Amazon generates a buttload full of free capital flow. They invested last year, $72 billion of free cash flow into other investments. What if, and what I think they are going to consider doing is, and, and by the way, that is double what they did in free cash flow from uh, 2019, from 31 billion to 72 billion. I suspect that what I think you're going to see is that Amazon may issue a dividend. Right. Apple has done it. At that rate of $72 billion, Apple or Amazon could give you a $143 dividend per share, which would be equivalent to 4.6% dividend. That's outrageous. That's, can you imagine the movement of senior citizens to a stock like Amazon that was paying a 4.16% dividend. Can you see how there might be a bid up in shares? What if then, if they didn't do such a high dividend, but instead did a dividend plus some buyback of shares, thus decreasing the number of shares and increasing the value of the shares that are out there. They've got this $72 billion that, they gen that they're generating, which is a more than 50% increase of from last year. And now we're looking at, we're taking them into 5G. We're going to fill the cloud with even more data that they can make even more money. Would it make sense to gain some momentum, to gain some availability to the stock by people who are looking for dividends. Okay, now let's step back and say, what if they did a split? What if rather than John Doe, who's at Robinhood buying a tenth of a share, fractional shares, they did a 10 to one split and they brought this stock down from today's price of $3,300 down to $333. And now our Robinhood investor could buy, with $1,000, could buy three shares and get a dividend and have a stock that gains momentum. Again, I'm not the new CEO of Amazon. I'm just putting together what I see here and see as an opportunity from my point of view as an investor or as a businessman. How do I get excitement around my stock? How do I get excitement around my stock like Elon Musk has gotten around his stock? Did he do a split last year? Yeah, he did. Did he pay dividends? No, he doesn't have the profits that Amazon does. Amazon is in a unique position to energize their stock, unlike anyone else, to basically create an atmosphere around their stock that these people are creating opportunities for me to own one of the best companies in the world. Now, right down the road from where I live, they're involved. Amazon has a distribution center. Blessed our city with a distribution center. Put a number of people to work at a distribution center. And then they organized and said, maybe we want to have a union. Why did that happen? Well, Alabama is a right to work state. And so all they need is a simple majority, 51%, 50 point percent, and they can unionize. It will be the first unionized uh, warehouse distribution center within the Amazon system. Uh, personally, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You don't give some, look somebody who's made your life better and say, hey, we want, we want more. 
That's not the way to get along. It's to work together. But that's another story. The fact is, if Amazon would split their stock 10 to 1, now these, union, now these workers could have an opportunity to become owners. Once they become owners, their attitudes about unionization changes. Hey, I'm an owner. I'm, I'm, I'm now on the same team as management. I'm now on the same team as the big guys. I want them to be profitable. I don't want them to go the routes of General Motors, General Electric, you call it general anything you want, strapped by unions. So my whole emphasis here is, Andy, you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to gain some momentum around your company, the probably the best company in the world. You have competition in the uh, e-commerce space, particularly from people like Alibaba and JD in China. And then there's a C group in South Asia and a Mer Mercadala Libia in Latin America who are coming after you in the, um, the e-commerce world. But you own the cloud. You, 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 are, you own the profits that are generated by the cloud. Uh, let's start sharing them. And let's take Amazon to the next level. Okay. Oh, and, and uh, Andy, uh, you can go to Best of Us Investors and you can register and you can become a member of our Discord and you can come and share your ideas and we'll share our ideas and you can become a member of our tribe. That's my personal invitation to you, Andy. And why don't you... Speak to the rest of the members of the board and uh, come join our team. All right. We'll, we'll be looking for you. All right. Thanks. I'll be talking to you again tomorrow.